XRP got an explosive breakout yesterday. We effectively went impulsive and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the price action and what I think is going to happen next here with XRP. Now guys as I get into this video if you do find it useful and informative hit the like button I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel why not go ahead and subscribe tap the bell select all notifications and in doing so you are going to be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. If you haven't yet joined us in Discord links in the description down below fantastic community talking crypto 24 7 and um, so why not check it out i don't think you'll be disappointed by what you find right let's jump down into xrp here and see what's going on with the price action so again we're just going to start things off with the hourly chart and binance as the data source and i really want to talk about this uh, this move higher right because we had this scoped out at about 83 um cent point five yeah 83 and a half cent um, and then we basically went up to the 1.618 so for those who are unfamiliar with elliott wave theory and how it works i'm just going to briefly break this down and um, so basically every single move should start off as an abc okay the abc is basically just known as a corrective pattern they can go in both directions they can go up or they can go down, okay? They're just short-term corrective moves, okay? And then that's kind of how you articulate them. They probably have a wrong name, call them corrective moves, because a lot of people assume that an ABC has to go down because corrections must be down, right? Um, but no, and they go in both directions, right? And they're basically what it means is it's short-term, okay? It's a short-term move, okay? Correction pattern. Um, so what you have here is essentially uh, an ABC pattern that we were tracking here. Okay, and it should have ended it, I say, at about 43 and a half cent, right? That would have been the one to one ratio. So the most common relationship between the A wave um, and the C wave is a one to one. Okay, so whatever the length of our A wave is, okay, we'll call that one. Um, the C wave should also equal one, at least as they should. It's the most common relationship. Okay, so um, you have a, a measurement of one for the A wave. So what we do is you grab your Fibonacci retracement tool um, and you grab it from the top of the A wave if it's an upward move and down from the bottom if it's a downward move and you just move it over to the bottom of the B wave and you can see that uh, our C wave should come right in here on a one to one ratio. Okay, um, so basically this is the kind of the fundamental basics of measuring out um, the ABC move, right? However, sometimes what you have is if we put that back and we draw the, the Fibonacci retracement tool and we move it over to the B wave low, the C wave sometimes crosses 1.618. When it does this, it is no longer classed as an ABC move. Instead, what you have is something called an impulsive move. Okay, so you have a, an A wave up, a B wave down, and an impulsive move upwards, which is a wave three. And then you'd have a pullback for wave four, and then you have a fifth wave going higher. Okay, and I talk about these impulsive moves all the time on the channel. Okay, so what we've had here is basically uh, as XRP go impulsive. Okay, so we had a, a wave one, we had a wave two, we had a wave three, we've had a wave four, and we've had a wave five, okay? Um, and this is where we are right now. So essentially, that meant we, we pushed higher than our original target. Our original target was 83.5 cent, and instead we actually landed on 86.5 cent, okay? So you can understand that there's an opportunity here. Let's hypothetically say we're an active trader and we get out at 83.5 cent. We go up and we think, okay, we've gone up a little bit higher. We could get back in on that fourth wave low, which consequently in XRP's case here was also 83.5 cent, which means we're protecting ourselves in case it's just an ABC move and we actually see further downside. And if it does go up, we could also get back in on the low fourth wave, right? And then we can ride it up into a fifth wave high get back out again and we can maximize our profits right so it's important that we understand the structures of things okay um and you know if you don't fully understand it i suggest you know really getting into some elliott wave understandings and how it works and uh, how to do correct wave counts and all that kind of stuff there's a lot of people out in the space specifically on youtube that don't necessarily get the counts correct so it's important that you do um, do some pretty good understanding of the unbreakable rules uh, when it comes to Elliott Wave Theory. Nonetheless, I'm, I'm kind of getting distracted here. We should be talking about XRP. So XRP had a good run up, right? We had that impulsive break. We hit the 1.618. We pulled back down from wave four. We've hit the fifth, fifth wave high. Okay, cool. So what now? Well, now we end up with, when you have an impulsive move like this, an ABC correction. A, B, C. Okay, and again, same concept, uh, basically you measure 
the A wave, you come back down for the B wave. Now this B wave might go higher yet, we don't know, we just put it there for now. Um, so essentially this means that we've come down to approximately, you know, 82.5 on that one to one ratio. It is possible, however, that we find good support right here. We can actually see that a 702 or a 786 is actually really gonna resonate incredibly well with the previous support level of our wave four. So it's possible that actually this becomes our support line, whether that is 618, 702, or 786. I think the 618 in this case is probably going to be the best one to use and I think that's going to resonate incredibly well and bearing in mind the stochastic RSI is showing us the momentum behind the price movement we're looking pretty good for a corrective move to come to conclusion. So we could potentially be looking at XRP coming down to about 83.5 again that would be the C wave high that we mentioned in yesterday's video um, and then maybe even starting to see another move up right again we'd start that with an ABC that might go impulsive again okay we'll keep an eye on that and um, so with an abc we're watching a b wave up we should be in expecting some kind of c wave down lower the bare minimum of this is to at least match the a wave okay so there's no hard and fast rule saying that you have to go to the one-to-one -one ratio that's just the most common good support being found at the 618 that's also cracking um, however we should also acknowledge that the minimum requirement for a c wave is to at least match up with that a wave um, so there's a minimum requirement here that we hit about 84 cent and again this actually would tie up with some resistance lines that we were watching previously so you're going to be right inside that zone in my opinion uh, on this downward move once that comes in we will be looking for an abc in the other direction and um, so again just going to throw some basics here for a second if we have abc up that is always going to be followed by abc down and if it's an abc down that's always going to be followed by an abc up okay and the same thing with impulsive moves if you have an impulsive move up um so if i grab this uh you have an impulsive move up that's always going to be followed by an abc down uh, that again it's potentially possible that that goes impulsive but it shouldn't really uh, in crypto it does but it shouldn't really be on the down jones and stuff like that and um, but basically impulsive move up and abc down okay um you get the idea likewise impulsive moves can go down okay so if you have an, a uh, an impulsive move down and you're at the bottom of a fifth wave expect abc up okay basics um so with all that being said let's actually just bring that back in we are looking at tracking up now we don't have any targets on this uh, elliott wave needs at least a couple of waves in here and um, to kind of get a good idea however we do know that there's going to be some kind of upward move that would occur at the bottom of a c wave okay um, so if we're trading, we could potentially get in and see where that goes and um, count the waves and find out where a good exit point would be. Or alternatively, we kind of wait to see a wave in, find a retracement and then jump in for the last little C wave, for example. Okay, so knowing this no, uh, basically helps us understand that we're expecting some kind of short-term pullback uh, just to kind of marry up with our A wave potentially, um, and then we go back up into uh, an ABC move upwards. Uh, the four hourly chart is overbought, the eight hourly chart is overbought, the daily chart is overbought, the weekly chart is overbought. So as I was saying a few um, days ago or potentially even yesterday, all of this is short term, right? This is all the stuff that's going to be happening now, um, today, maybe tomorrow. Um, but when we actually start looking forward and we start thinking, what's the most probable outcome here? Uh, well, we've completed a, an ABC move up here. We've uh, potentially had another, you know, ABC move up on our daily. And um, that's come in pretty much exactly what we were expecting there um so we should be now kind of thinking to ourselves there's going to be some kind of corrective pattern on our daily right we need to lower the daily stochastic rsi and um, so we should be thinking corrections are just around the corner and specifically when we take a look at that weekly chart right that weekly stochastic rsi is incredibly high i've got this mapped down here towards our support level as i said the c wave most typically goes to one to one ratio that would be us at 43 cent and um, but the minimum would be at least to the a wave and in this case that would actually put us down here uh, on this line of about 51 cent okay so we is going to be some kind of corrective pattern before we start thinking about another kind of push upwards okay and um, so for xrp um expect and enjoy this uh, volatility right now on a small time frame um, but they often say in crypto and um, you should be 
uh, greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. Right now, this market in XRP, Bitcoin, and a few other altcoins are getting a little bit too greedy. And this is where fear should be actually starting to keep kicking in a little bit. And then we should start to be thinking a little bit now about, uh, you know, taking some profits and starting to think about, you know, some kind of retracement that is going to occur for more accumulation and for further opportunity down the line. Um, so, yeah, I just want to leave you with that with you guys. Uh, if you have found this useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications. And in doing so, you are going to be kept up to date with everything that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. With all this said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. I'll catch you all in the next one.